Boker Tov Rabotai, the melacha we spoke about yesterday was the melacha of tofer, which is uh, sewing two pieces together, and we said that the sister melacha is korea, tearing. For example, we said that something that has tofer will have korea. So let's say somebody staples two things on Shabbat, he would be liable mishum tofer, and he would tear, let's say you sometimes you get papers of Shabbat from your children, and you tear one paper from the other, that's called melechet korea on Shabbat, and that would be forbidden. Now, Korea is by essence something that's destructive. You are destro- destroying something. And we know that Melechet Shabbat is to construct, not to destruct. That is the Melechet of Shabbat. So when somebody is Korea, why should he be liable um, uh, on a Melechet Deoraita if he's not really creating or constructing something? So the Mishnah says it has to be Korea al Menat Litfor. When somebody tears, just like when somebody erases, it has to be erasing on the condition that he's going to write, so too has to be tearing on the condition he's going to sow. Otherwise, it would remain an Isur de Rabbanan. So many times when somebody tears something and he doesn't have the intention to sew it back, it's not, he's not tearing a piece of clothing in order to sew it back, which was done in the Mishkan, it would only be an Isur de Rabbanan. Now there's a long discussion, what happens if you tear and you're not going to sew it, but, you, but it's a constructive purpose. That's going to be a big discussion. And it, this has a lot to do with uh, sometimes a person is stuck in the bathroom. He didn't pre-cut paper before Shabbat and he needs to cut toilet paper. He's stuck in the bathroom. What does he do? So we have to know that there's another melacha of Shabbat besides Korea called melechet mechatech. Melechet mechatech in English I would call it perforated cutting. Cutting on a perforated line. Exact precision cutting. And they did that in the Mishkan whenever they had to cut the hides for, for tapestry, they made them in a very exact cutting. So it's a different melacha than Korea. It's called melechet mechatech. And there, doesn't matter, constructive, not constructive, it's constructive itself that you're doing on the perforated line. So it's a separate melacha. So uh, let's discuss what would happen by, uh, by cutting toilet paper. For mechatech, definitely you shouldn't cut on the perforated lines. What happens if it's not on the perforated line, but you want an exact measurement? So Rav Ben Siona Bashaul in Nor Litzion Perik Mem She'el Avav suggested it might be a prohibition of Mechatech on Shabbat because I want something exact. Rabbi Shalom Misas in Shemeshu Magen Chelik Alev Siman Daled and Rabbi Moshe Malka in Shelotu Tshuvot Mikveh Hamayim who was he was the Dayan in Casablanca and it was in Chelik Gimel. Siman Lamed Gimel Lamed Daled. They both say there's no mechatech over here because as long as you're not doing it on the perforated line, you don't care how big it is, big, small. Also, Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Orbach, Rav Ovadia Yosef, brought down in Yebiomer Chelik Tet, Siman Kufchet, Sivkatan Kufpehei. They all say that that you don't really care exactly how long, so it's not a prohibition of mechatech. The question is. Is it a prohibition of cutting on Shabbat? Is it a, pro- is, is it a, is it a prohibition of tearing on Shabbat midi oraita? So we mentioned that it has to be tearing for a constructive purpose. So on one hand, you could say it's constructive because I need this paper. On the other hand, I'm not going to sew with it. I'm not going to re-sew the paper. And I'm also going to throw it out right away. So the consensus of most poskim is that tearing toilet paper on Shabbat on non-perforated line is only dirabanan. So now that we get it down to a dirabanan, we still forbid dirabanans. But regarding kavoda biriyut, honor of a person, there's an exception. How do we know this? It's written in the in the halacha in Siman Shin Yud Bet. If somebody uh, is stuck in the bathroom and he, he the only way that he could wipe himself in the old days, he had rocks that he used. The Gemara talks about this. It says even though the rocks are muktze, we waive the prohibition of muktze because of honor of kavoda biriyut. So Rabbi, uh, uh, Rabbi Ben Sinan Bashaul says, okay, that still has no, pro, no, no proof that Mishum Kvod Abriyut, you're allowed to violate Allah over here. Mukze is a lighter prohibition than Korea de Rabbanan, which is very close to a de Oraita. But as I mentioned, Rabbi Shalom Misas, uh, Rabbi Mikveh Amaim, Rabbi Vadi Yosef, and others, they all understood that, that it's the same. Since you have a concept of honor of Kvod Abriyut, on this type of Isur de Rabbanan, we waive the prohibition. And therefore, if somebody's stuck, of course he has to prepare as much as he can beforehand. But if he's stuck, he has no choice. Rabbi Shalom Misas agrees that one would be able to tear the toilet paper on the non-perforated lines. 
preferably, I always say this preferably, if somebody could do this with another shinui, that means you could do it with his elbow, tear it with his elbow, puts on in his knee and tears it with his elbow when he's stuck. So once again, it's best not to be stuck to prepare. But if somebody would be stuck, the opinions of the Rabbanim that I mentioned, including Rav Ovad Yosef, he, he quotes Rabbi Shalom Mizos and he agrees with them that, that one would be allowed, Mishum Kavod to tear on the non-perforated line the toilet paper. Hazaku Baruch.